Night riding, which lights to choose for bikepacking, touring, and ultra races. In this video, I'm gonna review four battery power lights, a dynamo hub, and three rear lights, so you can best decide a suitable light for your kind of riding. Battery power light or dynamo hub, which one you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. First, we have the Lensine Classic Drive 700 XL, which is 700 lumens, and it costs 52 euros. This light has 8 modes and a maximum runtime of 95 hours. I normally use it in the enduro mode that lasts 4 hours or the economy one that lasts 8 hours. The beam is quite focused and the charging time is around 2.3 hours. The weight is 118 grams and it comes with a handlebar strap and one button to perform all the functions. The exposure joystick NK15 is 1100 lumens and it costs 200 euros. This light has 7 programs and 18 modes. I normally run it in program 3 in the medium mode, which lasts around 12 hours. It has a maximum runtime of 36 hours. The beam distribution is really good and the weight is 98 grams with a charging time of 2 hours 20 minutes. It comes in a really nice case as well as the exposure strata that we will talk later with a helmet mount and also a handlebar mount so you can use it as a helmet light or as a second light, a charger and also a USB charger but it has a different plug so it's an exposure plug. The exposure strata RS is 1200 lumen and is the second most expensive light in this review at 313 euros. It has seven programs and 18 modes with a maximum runtime of 36 hours. I normally use it in the program three in the medium mode, which lasts around 12 hours. The beam distribution is great. It has a weight of 200 grams and it comes with a really nice box, a remote, two charging cables, one USB, and one main one with the exposure connection system. But the USB charger didn't work with this light, so I always have to carry the main charger which adds another 82 grams and it takes six hours to charge. Then we have the Moon Meteon Strom Pro, which is 2000 lumen at 100 euros. It has eight modes and a maximum runtime of 160 hours. I normally use it in the second mode, which lasts around 10 hours, but the interface is difficult to use and the distribution of the beam is really bad. It's really focused, so it tends to blind the cars. It weighs 215 grams and it comes with a lot of accessories, including a USB-C charging cable to charge it, a remote, and different mounts like the handlebar mount, which is really solid, also a helmet mount and a GoPro mount, and it takes six hours to charge. And the Triple B Strike Duo Light of 2000 lumens at 139 euros. It has seven modes with a maximum runtime of 200 hours. I normally use it in the third mode, which lasts around five hours and a half. The beam distribution is good. It's a wide beam and it weighs 222 grams. It comes with a remote control, also a handlebar mount that is quick release, like in the case of the Moonlight. You can buy separately a GoPro mount and it takes four hours and a half to charge. The most expensive light in this review is the Supernova M99 DY Pro, which is the one used in the Dynamo Hub. It's a thousand lumen and it comes at 330 euros. On top of the light, you have to add the cost for the Dynamo Hub wheel. This light has two modes, low beam mode and high beam mode with a maximum of a thousand lumens. The visibility with this light is really good. The beam is well distributed and is really easy to use. Some things to consider when choosing a light is the kind of riding that you're doing, more on-road or off-road, the number of lumen, the beam, so how is distributed the light. Also, are you planning to charge it often? Do you want it for bikepacking or maybe you are racing and you want the battery to last as much as possible? And also the regulations of your country. Some countries like Germany have more strict regulations towards cycling lights. Rear lights. The Garmin Varia is 149 euros. 
is a radar as well as a rear light. So it lets you know if cars are coming from behind and it has different adapters to mount it to different seat posts. This light is charged with a micro USB cable, which is really nice and it's really easy to see. The visibility is good, so cars can spot you when they are approaching. It weighs 107 grams. Moon Cerberus, it costs 30 euros and it has a mount that makes it really easy to mount it to different seat posts and chain stays. It has a USB-C charging port, which is really nice. It has a great visibility from the rear and also from the sides so cars can spot you when approaching sideways but the modes are really a bit difficult to operate it weighs 36 grams the triple b signal brake light it costs 42.95 euros it's really small and compact it has a usb-c charging port which is really nice the visibility is good it has a smart features like a stopping and braking mode and it's really lightweight at 28 grams for bikepacking trips, I like to take one front light and one rear light because I can always charge it in the hotel, in a cafe or in a camping place. For ultra races, when you are more time constrained, I like to have two front lights, one main light and one backup light and two rear lights so I can alternate them. When one dies, I can then turn on the other one. I was really impressed by the performance of the Dynamo Hub. I might consider getting one for myself in the future to be more independent for more adventurous bikepacking trips and also for long ultra races. I think it's really good, but for events less than a thousand kilometers or maybe more relaxed bikepacking trips, I will still use battery power lights or maybe some night rides with friends. I really like the Lensine Classic Drive because it's lightweight, reliable and easy to use. The exposure joystick is really nice because it doubles as a helmet light and as a backup light and I like the distribution of the beam. I'm a bit torn between the exposure strata using it or not because the beam distribution is really nice, it's a solid light but it takes too long to charge. So I will definitely use it for bikepacking trips but not for ultra races because I don't expect to take such a long breaks. And uh, then the Moon Meteon Storm Pro. I'm not really a fan of this light because of the distribution of the beam. It tends to blind the car, so maybe for using it for riding in trails, it's really good. The battery life is really long. I was also quite impressed by the triple B light. I think it's great. So the beam distribution is good. The battery lasts for a long time, easy to charge and quick to charge with the USB-C cables. The three of the rear lights are really good. I will use them all to be honest. So the Garmin Varia is really good because it's also a radar. So it alerts you if there is a car coming, especially at night is quite nice. And then the Triple B1 is a really nice little light, quite compact. Also, I like the features that it auto stops when you stop or that illuminates when you brake. And the Moon Cerberus because of the side visibility, very long battery life, and also it's really easy to mount in different seat posts, rounded, aero seat posts chain stay so it's a really good light i think they are all great options but it's up to you to decide depending on the kind of riding that you are doing let me know in the comments which lights do you use which lights in this review you prefer let me know in the comments below thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button below it really helps to support the channel see you soon